T-Biz Podcast delivers T-News that you need to know. A recap of the week's major headlines with commentary and cultural trends hosted by Dan Bolton. It is the voice of origin for tea professionals and enthusiasts worldwide. Think of us as a digital caravan of storytellers, bringing authentic, authoritative, and exclusive stories to you weekly from the tea lands. Hello, everyone. Here are the headlines. New criteria is proposed for differentiating specialty tea. Walmart tea is now 100% certified by Rainforest Alliance. And Kenya sets tea auction price minimums. More in a minute, but first, this important message. What makes a perfect cup of Ceylon tea? The perfect cup is from the tea businesses that ensure the protection of all the children living within their tea estates. We salute Kailani Valley, Telawakili, Boga Wanthalawa, Harana, and Eliptia Tea Estates. Support Save the Children, Sri Lanka. The European Speciality Tea Association this week presented a comprehensive new definition of specialty tea. The 450-word definition seeks to, quote, encapsulate the spirit of specialty tea, end quote, writes ESTA President Nigel Mellican. The essence is that those involved in producing specialty tea aspire to attain excellence from bush to cup, says Mellican. Four aspects cited in the definition seek to differentiate specialty tea from commodity. These include transparency that makes known the supplier, location, production dates, and processing method, physical characteristics such as size, shape, and appearance of the wet and dry leaf, sensory properties including color, clarity, flavor, aroma, and mouthfeel, and the mitigation of environmental impacts, including support for biodegradable packaging. The effort involves stakeholders at every level, but the messaging is directed at consumers. Quote, We believe that the consumer needs to be inspired from the moment they enjoy the aroma, liquor, and taste of the tea and celebrate in the plant's personality the origin of the tea the care that has been taken in the processing and brewing of it. This being a speciality moment, reads the association announcement. See the definition and supporting documents at www.specialtyteaeurope.com. Business Insight. Forty years ago, consumers in the U.S. and Europe tossed aside 25-cent cups of stale, anonymous, percolated, and warmed-over drip brew in favor of carefully selected, roasted, and barista-prepared single orange and coffee and specialty blends. The additional billions spent on $4 espresso drinks and premium beans revitalized the industry. Will the same be true for specialty tea? David Veal, executive director of the European Speciality Tea Association, discusses the reasoning behind the new definition later in this podcast. Walmart announced this week that its great value brand black and green teas will be 100% certified sustainable by the Rainforest Alliance. Quote, this is good news, not just for Walmart, but also for farmers and the future of tea, writes Sylvia Azre Kowas, Walmart Vice President of Private Brands Foods. She explained that Rainforest Alliance helps ensure that the three pillars of sustainability are met, social, environmental, and economic. Quote, our great value brand, black and green teas, will remain affordable, high-quality drinks with an added bonus. Each box you buy makes a measurable impact on the life of a smallholder farmer, according to the company. Business Insight In 2007, when Unilever, the world's largest tea supplier, committed to rainforest certification at Caracol, Kenya, it signaled to commodity suppliers 
that to remain competitive, they needed to invest in environmentally friendly cultivation at origin. A consumer-driven embrace of sustainable processing, packaging, and waste reduction soon unfolded, making the entire supply chain more efficient. In 2016, Walmart committed to sustainably source 20 commodities by 2025, including tea. Now, Walmart, the world's largest tea retailer, has extended that commitment to the terminus of the supply chain. Kenya sets tea auction price minimums. The Kenyan government withdrew tea valued at 1 billion in Kenyan shillings, about 9 million in U.S. dollars, at the Mombasa auction because prices failed to meet a controversial $2.40 per kilo minimum reserve price. Quote, We made a drastic but necessary decision with regard to sale of teas at the Mombasa tea auction. Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Peter Munya told the local press, The government has plenty of storage capacity and will continue withdrawing tea if prices do not meet the minimum rate, he said. The decision angered traders who simply purchased tea on offer from other African countries, leaving 8 million kilos of Kenyan tea idle in local warehouses. A spokesman for the East African Tea Traders Association said that when sellers set prices for themselves instead of relying on free market fluctuation, there is, quote, no guarantee that buyers will follow the lead, end quote. Production far outstrips demand, and as such, prices have taken a hit. This is not an auction problem, said EATTA's managing director, Edward Medibo. Secretary Munya said the government is determined to raise the price at auction. Quote, we believe we can sustain this situation as we have enough reserves, he told Citizen TV. Business Insight. It is unclear in this face-off whether the tea traders or the Kenyan government will be the first to blink. Nine tea-producing countries sell their tea at the Mombasa auction, and independent producers are free to ignore the Kenya Tea Development Agency's reserve price. But none can rival output of 620,000 smallholders supplying KTDA's 54 factories. Traders must also weigh the fact that tea exports are down from India, a bidding rival. The Sri Lanka auction at Colombo has sufficient volume, but prices are significantly higher than the recent five- and ten-year lows seen in Mombasa. Tea prices at the Mombasa auction have averaged $1.80 per kilo so far this year. Aravinda and Antheraman in Bengaluru reports on India's tea auction prices. India Tea Price Report for the week ending July 17th 2021. This week, we look at further developments in Assam as the new state government continues to woo the tea tribes, a significant vote bank. Even as an Oxfam report is released on a study on living wages among Assam's tea garden workers, in our auction watch, we see a slight decrease in prices when compared with the previous week. Hindustan Unilever and Tata Consumer Products remain in focus as top buyers, and in prices. CTC Leaf in South India is averaging below 100 rupees, while Orthodox tea saw prices ranging from 137 rupees in Kunur to 162 rupees in Kochi. In Kolkata, the second flushed Ajiling is nearing the end of season, and while average prices hover around 500 rupees, the top five Ajilings sold for prices ranging from 1,450 to 4,500 rupees, which was for a Castleton Moonlight tea. And now, a word from our sponsor. Q-Trade Teas works with tea purveyors at every scale, from promising startups to the world's largest multinational beverage brands in the hot, iced, and bottled tea segments. With U.S.-based formulation, blending, and packaging services, Q-Trade can help you innovate, scale up, and grow your specialty tea brand. For more information, visit our website, qtradeteas.com. TBiz this week travels to London for a chat with David Veal, Executive Director of the European Speciality Tea Association. Veal describes the association's new perspective 
and new definition of what makes specialty tea special. And then to northern India, where Arvinda and Antheraman visit a tea cafe with heart. A rigid definition of what makes tea special has eluded the industry. After 45 years of competitions, there is consensus on the qualities that make an outstanding oolong as judged by the Lugu tea farmers in Taiwan. In France, the AVPA has demonstrated skill in determining the gastronomic qualities in tea that please the local palate. The International Specialty Tea Association posts a set of universal standards such as pluck and leaf quality. Consumers mainly differentiate by price. This week, the European Speciality Tea Association announced a definition that is more aspirational than dogmatic. ESTA Executive Director David Veal joins us today to explain how the association adopted this approach and why it will prove helpful. David, the European Tea Society that evolved into the European Speciality Tea Association did so initially without delineating specialty tea from the great sea of commodity offerings. That task is now complete. Will you share with listeners your process in defining the specialty tea segment? Three years ago, we didn't really have a definition at that point. Nigel had this definition that was sort of in his head, but he'd never really put down on paper. And I'd been through the whole journey or attempted to get through the whole journey with the Speciality Coffee Association of Europe. So we, between us, we just laid down a fairly short definition, but was open to many people in the tea industry either disagreeing or having different views. And then we decided earlier on this year that we should have another go, really. So we set up a working group of experienced tea professionals to really look at it anew. And we covered an awful lot of ground. And we sort of, our starting point really was that, are we ever, ever going to get a a universally agreed definition of speciality tea, which everybody will agree with and nobody will argue with? The answer, of course, is is no. We, we, We never were going to do that. Knowing that we weren't going to achieve perfection, or should we look at it from a different angle and still call it a definition because that has impact, but really look at more of a description to broaden it out a little bit, to try and bring in words and descriptions and ideas and concepts that most people in the industry would buy into, uh, knowing that not everybody would be happy with every part of it. Will you summarize for listeners the fundamental concepts captured in the definition's key phrase? Quote, aspiring to excellence in all aspects of tea processing and brewing from the bush to cup. We came up with what we feel is a fairly holistic view about speciality tea in terms of it being a product, in terms of it being a passion for excellence, the taking care of every step. Also, not forgetting the most important part is the actual sensory experience in the the cup and also the education that uh, uh, that we've indulged in to try and help the consumer understand more about what they're drinking that indefinable subjectivity that you were talking about as well, the conceptual side of it, the uh, community side of it, the aspirational side of it, the point that it's uh, the movement as well, you know, that some people get and some people don't get. Merging all of those together to to, to come up with um, a description which we feel will never be perfect for everybody but is fairly close to where we might get. How will this definition make a difference? Well, to answer your first point, is it enforceable? Uh, no, but um, in a different way, we've sort of very firmly nailed our colours to the mast here. This isn't just the um, the work of the working group. It's uh, been endorsed by the whole of the board of, uh, of European Specialized Tea Association and other peers as well. If you look at those parameters that we've actually put into the definition, a speciality tea would have to fit into all of those for most people, I believe a speciality tea would have to fit into those parameters, but a tea that fits into those parameters isn't necessarily a speciality tea. The coffee industry successfully arrived at a definition of specialty, leading to consumer enthusiasm that ultimately benefited growers. 
but it took more than 20 years to establish the protocols that differentiate the highest quality coffees from commodity coffee. I think we're quite a long way behind the curve compared with coffee industry. We haven't got the penetration of education and understanding to consumers that the coffee industry does, but many people don't uh, have the correct understanding to be able to value a tea as well as they maybe do coffee nowadays. But it will it will follow with without a doubt. We don't particularly mention price, pricing. It's inherent in what we believe. If we can help improve the quality that's coming into consuming countries of speciality tea, then prices will go up and hopefully, you know, uh, a lot of that extra margin will go back down the line, you know, to the beginning of the line to give the people at that end a better living and a better reward for putting in their love, care, passion, hard work, sweat, perspiration, the whole thing to you know, make that make it better year on year. We know that we're up against the big, the big guys, the uh, multinationals, centuries old economic uh, model that drives price down and therefore quality with it. But you know, you have to believe that um, will improve the quality and will give the consumer a better experience and will give the producer a better price. We're also aware that speciality will be five percent to ten percent to the market maximum, maximum. But will pull as it improves, as it grows, and as the community grows, will pull along other parts of the industry. And I had a really good conversation with a, a, a very well respected, experienced person, worked for many of the big companies over here, uh, who told me the other day that um, he believes that speciality will be the savior of the tea industry. As you can imagine, I quite like hearing that. La Grava Tea is a remarkable tea cafe with hundreds of selections of fine teas inspired by the travels of founder Avinish Dugar. But aside from specialty teas, what makes La Grava Tea special is that the young staff are hard-working graduates of the local school for the hearing impaired. For the love of tea, Jamshedpur, the North Indian state of Jharkhand, is an industrial town famous for its steel industry. Its closest link to the tea regions would be to Kolkata, nearly 300 kilometers away. But one man here has succeeded in putting the town on the tea map with his cafe La Gravity. He sells a dizzying range of teas, from Darjeeling's and Japanese matcha to iced teas and flavored blends, alongside a menu packed with popular cafe dishes. But what makes La Gravity newsworthy is that it's manned by hearing impaired youth. Avinash Dugar, who started and runs La Gravity, talks about how it began. In 2015, he decided to step away from corporate life. He thought his calling lay in adventure sports, but while travelling through Southeast Asia, he happened to visit a tea bar in Hong Kong. More used to Indian chai stops, this was a revelation in what a tea bar could be. Avinash returned to India keen to start selling tea, inspired by what he'd seen. He set up a kiosk with 70 teas on offer, teas that he'd learned to source, brew and serve. He thought he would do for tea what the chain Cafe Coffee Day has done to popularize coffee in India. Until one day, among his customers, he saw a hearing impaired young woman. He struck a conversation with her brother who also mentioned that there were no jobs available for the hearing impaired. This struck a chord with Avinash who decided to expand his kiosk into a full-fledged cafe and employ hearing impaired youth. The local school for the hearing impaired were happy to connect him with their alumni. Avinash visited them, spoke to their families Many were reluctant to send their daughters to work, but he went on to hire six young women, training them in all the aspects of running a cafe. In these six years, the first set of staff have since moved on and he's hired others in their place, also hearing impaired. And tea? La Gravity's menu has since doubled and offers a range that includes several chai types, tisanes, darjeelings, assams, matcha, sencha and even the yerba mate. Along with tea, the cafe is also fast becoming a museum for teaware. On a Saturday afternoon, I get a WhatsApp tour of La Gravity. I spot a teapot-shaped clock, several teapots from across the world, a prized Victorian moustache teacup procured from Kolkata, some overs, vintage teaspoons, and several other collectibles. Avinash talks about a consignment that's made its way slowly through customs, one that holds a four-and-a-half-foot teapot from China, which will make him the owner of the largest teapot in India. He confesses to a great love for teapots. 
La Gravity is an unusual tea cafe which showcases all the things its owner seems to love. Teas from all over the world, vintage teapots, the French language, a desire to do good for the community. What seems to tie it all together is that it's all heart. Intrigued by what you heard in today's podcast? Would you like to learn more from our global network of tea biz journalists and tea experts? Contact them directly through Subtext, a private message-based platform. Avoid the chaos of social media and start a conversation that matters. Subtext's message-based platform lets you privately ask meaningful questions of the tea experts, academics, and tea biz journalists reporting from the tea lands. You see their responses via SMS texts, which are sent direct to your phone. Visit our website and subscribe to Subtext to instantly connect with the most connected people in tea. Remember to visit the T-Biz website for more comprehensive coverage. That's www.t-bizbiz.com. Thanks for listening. Farewell till next week.